You're listening to the March 31st, 2024 reading of Blossom Goodchild's Channeling with the Federation of Light. Hello, my friends. The last time I chatted to you in this way seems an eternity ago, as does the cruise I had the pleasure of experiencing only last week. Time is a funny thing. On to business. Many are intrigued to know if you have any words to offer regarding the new monolith that appeared out of nowhere in Wales last week. Care to comment? Welcome back from your travels, Blossom. You were unsure of its deeper purpose. Yet, it does not always need to be apparent at the time, because if it was made known, one's thoughts and actions in trying to make more of it would defeat the objective. Best, in many situations of this kind, to simply allow and let be in the knowing that you did what needed to be done. Thank you for that. I accept that, and it settles well. The new addition to the already founded structures, known to you as monoliths, is indeed from out of nowhere. It is to start off yet another series of such matter that are now in time ready to be suitably positioned. There shall be some time lapses intermittently spaced in order for settlement and intrigue. There are five more to arrive in quite a short period of your time. Hmm, that is quite precise. For now, that is the number we are prepared to offer. Although, as your days progress, the build-up of such monuments shall increase, as they are an essential part of the divine plan. It seems, as with the other authentic structures, that there's no trace of evidence as to how they got there. Are you able to offer knowledge on this? These structures were compiled off-world, in a particular ship that has a vast compartment that was developed specifically for the intention to create them. Their intelligence assisted in their own making. Hold on. Are you saying they helped to make themselves? Yes, that is exactly what we are saying. You see, Blossom, the off-world scientists designated to design such structures of intelligence were fully aware that the inner workings of these monoliths would be able to continue certain placements of that which the scientists created, and then co-create them further, of their own accord. So, sort of like a highly intelligent version of what we know as AI? Sort of. Here again, Blossom, we have trouble explaining to you that which is beyond the understandings of the human understanding. I know, I can feel that. Let's persevere, if we can. As we have expressed before, the role of such structures stands in high status for that which is to come, and that which is planned to take place down the track could not be accomplished energetically if it were not for these monoliths to be in their exact positioning at the exact alignment of all in the universe. What? All in the universe. Indeed, Blossom, for this divine plan involves just that. The entire universe to be in a position, in a space of itself, for all to go, according to plan. I want to say, go where? Into the higher dimensional stage of the Earth's journey. It is destined this is why we reiterate time and time again to let go of fear and to know that the light has won. It always has. It always will. It cannot lose. For it is light love and there is nothing that exists that is not from of it. Back to the universe being in alignment. 
So do you mean the stars and planets, etc., have, are, to be in a certain position for when this must take place? We do. Nothing can interfere with this. Yet I presume it must remain a secret as to when this takes place. You presume correctly. If we were to say when this will occur, that would cause interference, and nothing is to interfere. You once did a wonderful channeling telling us all about the monoliths and crystals and what would happen at their time of activation. It was so exciting, and to think that all the astrological plans have to be in place at the time of activation, I find a thrilling concept. It is indeed extremely exciting for all that is. For all that is plays its part in this transformation. Are you able to give us a clue regarding the after effects of this event? Change. Down to the change in your very soil. Why did you pick soil out of all the things you could have said? Because you express soil to be earth, do you not? Yes. So the activation, when it takes place, will change the energy of all that is. You are aware that energy is made up of atoms, molecules, etc., in order for something to be. The activation connecting monoliths, crystals, stars, planets, grids, and much more will be so powerful that it will shift the energy of that which energy knows itself to be into a higher dimensional form of itself. Is this higher energy new in that does it already exist elsewhere on other more evolved planets? Yes, it is new in as of itself. Indeed, many planets and existing life are of a much higher vibrational level than that of your earth plane at this present time. Yet, this part of the plan that we are speaking of is to create a new higher energy of, for, itself. And once created and activated, it can then continue to create and activate, surging this new energy into a higher position all of its own. Thank you so much for all that information. Marvellous. Could we move on now to talk about the eclipse that's happening on the 8th of April? There's so much speculation about it. Me, I have a feeling that by April the 10th, once again, everyone will be wondering what all the fuss was about, as we always do. Blossom, good child. Oh, how it freaks me. <laughs> Yet amuses when you say my full name. It is to do with the energetics within your name that makes it appropriate for us to use it at times. As a side note, Goody and I had to get married in order to be accepted into Australia. We both had been married before and neither of us wanted to enter into wedlock again. Yet we had to, so we did. I know now this had to be so I could end up with such a fab name, not knowing of the energetics of it at the time. Every single time someone asks my name, I get a response of, what a lovely name, or words to that effect, every single time. You see, Blossom, at the time of being made to wed, you were both very dismayed. Yet, does this in itself not show you that there is reason in all things? Even though one may never discover what that reasoning is, so, Blossom good child, this coming eclipse... Of which I must butt in here to say, I really know little about it other than speculation that schools are going to close down and the usual fear-mongering of getting extra food in, etc. Ridiculous speculations are in circulation. This eclipse that is to come is known to be special. We consider all eclipses to be special, 
as they mark moments in time in your world. Eclipses are markers. Points in a diary, would we say. Points to take note of as they make a difference in planetary shifts and have effects on the stability of the movement of all that travels through your spatial existence. Again, difficult to express in your language of words. I know. I can feel and visualize what you're saying, yet words fail. I'm hoping many can get telepathically from you what you're saying. Yes, many will. Especially those who are involved in spreading knowledge of the planets and stars. They will find a way to express it into your talk. My brain does not compute with astrology, no matter how hard I try. Yet there's a lady named Pam Gregory who I've listened to in the past, and if anyone can translate for you, I reckon she can. She can, and she does, and will continue to do so. This lady is highly connected with such matters and chose this position this time around to assist many along this particular pathway that so many find so intriguing. She, as she knows within her being, has been known famously in other lifetimes on such matters, accumulating knowledge with each lifetime to benefit the whole. We take this opportunity to honor all that she offers for the betterment of mankind. How lovely. So, is it a biggie, this eclipse? Is it going to blow our blouses up? It is to be spectacular. Yet, in our honest opinion, it is not going to set your planet on fire. Has it been said it will? We believe so. I hadn't heard that one. You would be surprised what has been concocted in order to both thrill and scare. Probably not. Not anymore. We've all become so used to the lies and propaganda... Many of us no longer are phased by it all, just over it and wanting to move on. And moving on you are, always. So we conclude, yes, this eclipse will be a sight in the darkness of it. And for those who tune in to it, there will be a welcome shift in energy. Yet, we wouldn't suggest an emergency trip to stock up on food is necessary. Good. I think too many of us have been there, done that, and then it all went past its sell-by date. Before we take our leave this day, we would care to mention that many are feeling and experiencing the knowing of something building into something. You have a game called Jenga. We are showing you of how one must so very carefully take a piece from somewhere within the already compiled structure and place it on top, so as to keep the tower rising. Yet, one false move, and the whole thing collapses. And you are going to leave us to work that out for ourselves, aren't you? <laughs> so many scenarios can be concocted from that. Therein lies the fun. Guys, this has been such a pleasure to be back with you today. Good info offered, for which we are all so very grateful for the uplift. Blossom, good child. If we had faces, they would be smiling. Yet, no, our energy is expressing so much love to each and every one. Thank you so much. In gratitude, in loving service. I am. Um...